What was Randy Scott like? You know, he, he was an aristocrat from Virginia. You know, he was a, kind of a, he was the only guy, he was the only actor, I think, who ever was admitted to the L.A. Country Club. <laughs> because he's a wonderful golfer. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the L.A. Country Club, they, they shunned actors. They didn't want them. You know, they sent them to another club. <laughs> Our guest today on A Word on Westerns is the wonderful actor and horseback man, Claude Jarman Jr., he worked with a lot of the giants in the Western industry, of course, John Wayne and Rio Grande and the Outriders with Joel McRae, Gregory Peck and the Yearling, his film debut, but Randolph Scott in Hangman's Knot, which is a terrific film. Hey, he's here right now. Claude, welcome to the show. Okay. Yep, I, I remember uh, making that film up in Lone Pine. It was... Uh, it, it's funny, it was, I was a senior in high school and in Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, in uh, April, I got a call saying, can you come out and spend a month uh, making Hangman's Knot? And so I had to. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not? You know, and it was fun. And we, we went out and we're up in Lone Pine. And it's funny, the, the, the friend that I that I made there, who remained a, a longtime friend, was Lee Marvin. I think uh -huh. that was Lee's, if it wasn't his first film, that was close to it. So he was just starting out. You got one too, miss. Stay you. I'm sorry, ma'am, truly. Get on with it. Well, she doesn't have a gun. And he was just, he, you know, for a seventeen-year-old to hang around with him was 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 a lot of fun, and uh, I would go out riding with him in his Thunderbird convertible uh, down Hollywood Boulevard. But uh, anyway, he was heavy in there, and of course, I shot him. Drop it, Rob! Drop it! He was a great heavy in that. It, it's so scary. He, he is in that film, just volatile. And I think it's great that he, even though you shoot him in the movie, that you became friends. Yeah. How did how did that develop? Well, just, you know, there I was hanging around and we were, he was, we were part of, of, the, of the posse. And so therefore we were in, in a lot of scenes together. So we spent a lot of time together and just chatting with him. He was... Uh, former Marine and had a lot of stories to, to, to tell. And uh, it was just a very uh, entertaining, great storyteller. Uh, what you see is what you get. He was, he was a lot of fun. Yeah. I didn't see that much. He was, he was more res restrained. Uh, Donna Reed, who's absolutely gorgeous, mm -hmm. was in the movie. And uh, so it, it was a, it, it was a fun, fun film, and I think uh, Roy Huggins. Roy Huggins directed and wrote it, and he he never had directed before, I don't think. Well, I think that was his first and only, I'm not sure he even directed another film after that. Well, he did a great job on that. He was a huge uh, television uh, successful producer. Certainly. He created Maverick and Rockford Files. No, I mean, he was quite a, quite a successful guy, but that was his first... Uh, I think first and only film that he was directing, but he, you know, obviously a knowledgeable. What kind of a director was he? Uh, do you remember any incidents? He knew what he wanted. He was prepared. You know, he did, he didn't fly with the seat of his pants. He knew exactly what what he was looking for. So you like that when you're an actor. You like somebody who knows where you're going to go rather than try to make it up as you go along. The characters are all very strong in that, and, and the cast, too. I know Donna Reed was really frightened of your friend, Lee. Nobody's going to hurt you. Just hold quiet. No one's going to do you any harm. <laughs> because he was such a bad guy.
Also in that was Big Boy Williams, who had been a B Western star on his own and uh, the, a great sidekick in the Warner Brothers films. It was it Frank Phelan? Uh, that it was. A, it was a lot of the, uh, a lot of the cast of, of Western uh, cowboys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Frank Phelan. He had played Whitey, the bad guy in Whispering Smith with Alan Ladd too. Uh, another okay. great star. Do they know the goes in here? They ever find out? Gonna be nobody left alive in here to tell. You got any plans? Mm-hmm. You go out shooting sometime tomorrow. You had Jeanette Nolan in that, too, uh, running the way station with old Clem Bevins. Uh, what a cast. What a great film. And you were very good in that, too, I think. You know, what was Randy Scott like? He was... Uh... <clears throat> I always was very interested in his accent. You know, he, he was an aristocrat from Virginia. You know, he was a, kind of a, he was the only guy, he was the only actor, I think, who ever was admitted to the L.A. Country Club. <laughs> because he's a wonderful golfer. <laughs> you know, the L.A. Country Club, they, they shunned actors. They didn't want him. You know, they sent him to another club. But he was there, and, and uh, I went out to his house for dinner. He, he was he was kind of all business, you know. This film was made in like four weeks, mm -hmm. so we didn't have a lot of time to hang around. I think. Well, his regular producer Harry Joe Brown, I believe, uh, produced that movie too. Harry Joe Brown, yeah. So it, it was we were under a tight leash. And it was good for me because I was able to go back to school and graduate. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried about that. Oh, that that's a good thing too, going back to school. But what a what a wonderful summer vacation. Did you ride horses around Lone Pine in the Alabama Hills too? No, I never, never rode back in uh, in the South. Uh, although I did ride in in True to the Dust, I did, I did uh, some horseback riding in, in that movie down in Mississippi. Another great actor of westerns is Joel McRae, and you did a terrific film with Joel McRae that also had. James Whitmore in it, and another MGM, uh, Color Western. What was Joel McRae like? Well, you know, that, that was a movie, if you, if you look at that movie, you didn't, you didn't see too much of me. It was The Outriders, and we made it in Kanab, Utah. And uh, I really didn't have that much to do with, with him. Uh, I think Arlene Dahl was my, uh, was a sister. So it's a film that I was just hanging up, hanging around up in Canab a lot, wondering what I'm <laughs> supposed to do before I drown. Metro Goldwyn Mayer pays tribute to the hard fought glories of those pioneer fighting men who scouted the trails and brought the wagons through. The Outriders, protectors, defenders, guardians in the wilderness. Neither savage hordes nor white marauders could stop them. On uh, Roughshod, you got to horseback ride all the time. Did you get to oh, go yeah. horseback riding with Joel McRae, though? Correct. No, I, I, I was very fortunate to really spend a lot of time on horses. I still ride several times a year and take these seven to ten day rides uh, where we... Oh, I, I always wanted to do that, but I think I'm beyond that now. I don't think I could... The ground is as soft as it was uh, back then, so it hasn't changed much, but the horsebacking yeah. is still terrific. I ride with a group in Wyoming every year. We go up uh, outside of KC to the actual hole in the wall, and then in the spring, I, I've been riding with this same group in the Tonto National Forest outside of Scottsdale, and then we'll uh, drive on up to Sedona and ride there, which is also spectacular country. Oh, well, that's, that's a, uh, I'm sure that's a real treat. Delmer Daves, who shot most of his movies outside of Sedona and uh, using yeah. those great rocks that, just like Ford had Monument Valley in Kanab, Delmer right. Daves had Sedona and those drumbeat and uh, The Last Wagon, all those great movies are spectacular, right. too. You ever been there? Yes, I have been. It's gorgeous. Plane off of that, up on top, which is kind of 
you could take a plane, go up to Las Vegas on out of Sedona. Let me ask you about your work in the film festival. I moved to San Francisco in uh, 1961, and uh, I'd been I'd just I'd been in the Navy for three years, and uh, had also lived in Birmingham for a couple of years. So I moved to San Francisco, and the festival uh, started out as an uh, Italian week in San Francisco, and and it really wasn't very well run, and uh, uh, was beginning to get a lot of negative reviews, and, and they had one movie, which is, this is kind of hilarious, the, uh, it was a, a movie from, I don't know, maybe Czechoslovakia, but they couldn't find the first reel of the movie, <laughs> so they had the director stand up and give a synopsis of the first reel. Ooh. Show the second reel. And then they found the first reel. So then they started to film over again. <laughs> <laughs> the people in San Francisco, this, is, this does not represent our city. <laughs> I was uh, friends with the people who, uh, the person I worked for was president of the uh, San Francisco Chamber of Commerce. And I said, why don't you establish a study group to find out what can be done to take it over because the guy who's running it is a theater owner and he, it's, it's beyond him because now it's become a, a bigger event. So as a result of that, I was involved in that study and uh, after a year, I, I ended up taking it over and I ran it for 15 years. And it was great because it gave me an opportunity to uh, reintroduce myself to a lot of people who I'd met in Hollywood and then had left. So we had these tributes every afternoon and it, they created such a bonanza for the city because you had an afternoon of film with uh, Paul Newman and you'd show clips for three hours of all his movies and he'd come on and talk about it. And this was the beginning of, of something that uh, uh, became extremely uh popular, and you can't name anyone, practically, that we didn't have. The only person we never were able to get up here was uh, Orson Welles, but we did get, uh, you know, Betty Davis, uh, uh, Shelley Winters, uh, you, you name it, whether they were uh, actors from Europe, uh, Jean Moreau, we had uh, Yves Montan. So it was really quite an 11-day event every fall for 15 years. So that was kind of what, what we did. And then after 15 years, I thought, well, I think I've kind of had it. You know, I, I've, <laughs> I don't know who else I can bring. I ended up, uh, my last year, I, I, I was able to get Sir Alec Guinness, who I'd always wanted, and, and he flew over. And uh, we had him as our opening night event. So, uh, at any rate, it was a uh, it was quite a great experience, and it's still going on. And what a wonderful legacy to have brought to the city uh, all of these great filmmakers. Oh yes, no, it, it was it was quite an event, and uh, so I, I enjoyed doing that. And it was it was kind of the end. Once I did that, I thought, well, this is kind of it. And the only other thing I did, which is interesting. I kind of lost interest in acting, and, uh, and then John Wilder, who was a producer, uh, was making this uh, series called Centennial. Sure, a great series. And I'd like for you to, I have a part I'd like for you to play. And I said, okay, but I said, I will only do it if I can do a test. He said, okay, so I flew down to the test. He says, you know, you did, did, did well. We're going to have uh, how are you and you're going to spend uh, a month in December in Greeley, Colorado, where it's 10 below zero. <laughs> and that's what I did. And, but then I thought, well, this isn't. <laughs> it's not as glamorous as people think. That's enough. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a classic miniseries to go out on as an actor, too, though. So Yeah. No, it was quite successful. So it was, it was fun. Huge. And John Wilder, just brilliant. 
to have put that whole thing together, too. Yeah, no, it was quite successful. There's a book, too, that uh, I'd like to hear about. My Life in the Final Days of Hollywood. People had asked me for a long time, said, you, know, you, you were in Hollywood during the golden years. You were at MGM when it was really the, the, top of the top of its game and it was top of the world. And you had all the people there from Elizabeth Taylor to Frank Sinatra to you name it. Uh, they were all uh, under contract there. And you went to school with Elizabeth Taylor and you went to school with Margaret O'Brien. And that's so, you know, right write it. So it took me a year and I did uh, complete it and it's out. It's interesting when you when you really put your mind to it, you, you, the things that you can recall. I think everybody can do that and I recommend it for people to sort of recreate their lives a little bit and it, it, was, it was fun. I, I enjoyed it and uh, it was amazing some of the things I remembered. Perhaps because you wrote your book and these things are fresh in your mind, I want to get your book too, but your stories that you've shared with us have been terrific. When I was acting, I was, uh, I didn't have a photographic memory, but I could, I could quote every line in the yearling, every, every part. Wow. And when I was 11 years old, because you, you, your mind is so absorbent back then, sure, yeah. when you're younger. I always heard that Lee Marvin was a quick read like that, that he could memorize his lines quickly. The one I always heard who, who probably was a genius at it was Mickey Rooney. Mm -hmm. They said he could he had total recall, that he could come in in the morning and they'd show him a script and in five minutes he'd say, let's go. So there are people who are like that. I wasn't like that, but I could, I did have a good memory on these. And, I, and this was a challenge in the book, you know, to come back and, and uh, you know, recreate Florida, to recreate the film festival stuff. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's people who are interested in movies, I think, would be interested in, in this book because I don't write about me as much as I write about the people that I had the experience of, of being with. Yeah, me, I'm a film buff, but I'm a good listener, and, and you've been a wonderful guest, Claude. I appreciate you taking the time up there in San Francisco to share with all of us who, who love film and, and especially Westerns. Thank you. I, I love it. I love Westerns. I love to talk about Westerns. I love to see Westerns. What, what's your favorite Western, then? I have a couple. Uh, Shane is one of my all-time mm -hmm. favorites mm -hmm. uh, because it's the good guys beating the bad guys, and, and I, I just think that's a wonderful film. It's got your pal Ben in it too, Ben Johnson. Probably uh, one of my absolute favorite films is My Darling Clementine. I loved Henry Fonda in that movie, and, and uh, Victor Mature, Linda Darnell. That that was a that's a fabulous movie. That's that's a great Western. It surely is. It sure, did you ever meet Fonda? Yes, I did. In fact, we had him at the film festival. And uh, I had a, a picture of him that uh, I spent some time with him. And, and he was he was married to Shirley, I think, was his wife. And they came up. Usually when people came up to the festival, I would spend some time and have a dinner with them or do some one-on-one -on -one uh, uh, events with them, which which was which was fun. We also had Jane Fonda had his had his daughter at one point. Anyway, no, but Henry Fonda is one of my all time favorite actors. Thank you so much, Claude. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. I'm sorry, ma'am, truly. Get on with it. Well, she doesn't have a gun. Hey, Rap. We 
We've got a friend of yours out here. Have a look. Do they know the ghost's in here? Never find out. Gonna be nobody left alive in here to tell. You got any plans? Mm-hmm. We go out shooting sometime tomorrow. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Just hold quiet. No one's gonna do you any harm. <laughs> 